Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. This is your host, Colin Cattell. As you can see on the screen today, we have one of our most popular guests back on the program, Jeff Berwick. He's the publisher of The Dollar Vigilante. Jeff, welcome back to the program. As always, in the background, there's the beautiful Bay of Acapulco, where you host your annual Intercapulco Conference, and I was down there with you a few years ago. Lovely place you live in. How's everything in Mexico these days? Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, uh, the, the news always says Mexico's bad, but uh, the, the reality on the ground is it's it's really not that bad at all. I think they, they do that to keep Americans from realizing that they're like super close to an actual freer country. And so they just want them to stay in their homes and not realize because if they came down to Mexico, they'd be like, this is quite a bit better than where we live. Why is that? Yeah, well, having having lived in Guatemala, which is just south of you there in Mexico, there's so much more freedom afforded when you're not in a, a police state. And oftentimes <laughs> being in the U.S. and Canada, I feel like uh, I have to watch my every move when I'm driving or whatever I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jeff, I got to give a big congratulations to you. You guys have been at the forefront of this crypto movement. And no matter what anybody has to say, good or bad about it, you've been right and been in the most exciting market over the last year. What, what's going on in the crypto space these days? Oh man, what what isn't going on really? It's uh it's actually surprised even me how well it's gone. I've been one of the biggest promoters as you know of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. I was in 2011, I was telling everyone to buy it when it was around $3. I was called crazy. They said it was a scam, a Ponzi scheme. I said, "No, this is going to change the world." 2013, 14, 15, some people started catching on. I said, "You it's your last chance to buy this before it really takes off." Uh, again, a lot of people said, "I'm crazy. No way. It's going to get shut down." All all this sort of stuff. Uh, but this one year, then 2017, has shocked me. I, I, It's happened so fast. I knew it was going to happen happened at some point. I knew that there, there was going to be awakening of, you know, you, the average sort of financial uh, investment sort of people, Wall Street, for example. I knew they were going to catch on to what's going on here. I was around for the beginning of the internet, and this looks exactly the same to me as the beginning of the internet. This is sort of inter internet 3.0, in my opinion, uh, the cryptocurrency blockchain space. But I knew that years ago, but Wall Street just seems to have figured it out this year, and you're really seeing them pile in right now. I, I, I did not expect my price target for Bitcoin this year was... 3,000 something. It's now over 7,000. So it's doubled over my price prediction. Uh, I did not expect the other altcoins and cryptocurrencies to do anywhere near as big as they've gone. Some of them have done absolutely in, in, even better than Bitcoin, really. Ethereum, we recommended at $2, now $300. Um, so it's surprised even me, but I, I'm happily surprised, obviously, because we are very heavily invested in the space and we got all of our subscribers into the space. Uh, but I still think we're still got a long ways to go. There's going to be definitely some up and ups and downs, a lot of volatility. We'll have some major crashes along the way. We actually, there was just one two days ago. Bitcoin went down from 8,000 to five, uh, about 7,500 to about 5,500. It's now back about $8,000 now. So uh, it's definitely going to be volatile. It's not, not going to be necessarily easy, but uh, in some ways, this space still has a long ways to go. Yeah, let's talk about how, how much longer this has to go, because you can look on the one hand and say, oh my God, everybody's talking about Bitcoin and this, the chart looks straight up if you look at a short enough time duration. And then on the other hand, you could probably go in a room of uh, normal Americans and say, raise your hand if you own any Bitcoin and the amount of people that put their hands up is not going to be that much. So like, where are we in the hysteria phase? Is this just getting started still? It's so hard to tell, as you know, and I went through the internet tech bubble, so I, I remember what that was like, and it's so hard to know where you're at. But uh, as you pointed out, yeah, most your average person still doesn't have any Bitcoin. Your average person, you can go anywhere in the world and find a thousand people and ask anyone hey, a Bitcoin, probably one, maybe two people put their hands up. Uh, it depends on where you are, of course. But um, And then you have the sort of the you know, people just piling in now, which is, is a little bit uh, scary uh, as far as like this could be a, a peak coming. Uh, but then you have to just look at valuations as well, because the entire cryptocurrency space, that includes Bitcoin and every other cryptocurrency, Ethereum and all the others, is about $220 billion right now, which is far less than the valuation of something like Facebook or Apple. Um, and we're talking about cryptocurrencies that can ab absolutely change the world. We're talking about Bitcoin, which could 
actually replace things like fiat currencies at some point, and that's still years down the road. But if you look at the actual valuation of, for example, gold, a lot of people say Bitcoin is a digital version of gold, and in many ways it is, and it was actually designed that way. Uh, it and it's uh, you know the total value of gold. You probably know this better than me, but I believe it's around seven trillion dollars total value of all gold ever mined, roughly, because no one really knows uh, compared to Bitcoin at about a hundred billion dollars right now. So you just do the math. If Bitcoin does become as valued as gold at some point, it's going to go up thousands. Thousands and thousands and thousands of percent. And and then you look at the U.S. dollar, if it's ever going to replace that. So that's down the road quite a bit. But, yeah, that's the things that everyone's trying to weigh right now. So, you know, you look at it when I got into it at three dollars, it's now at about eight thousand dollars. It's like a three hundred thousand percent gain. Usually in most markets, you'd be like, maybe you should sell it. <laughs> you, you had a three hundred thousand percent gain, maybe take some profits. But it's like, yeah, but it hasn't really started yet. It, it's bizarre. It's mind blowing to watch a potentially uh, nascent uh, coming currency that could be used worldwide come into fruition. No one really knows where it's going to go. It could go to zero and it could go to a million dollars. It's wild and crazy. And I'm just happy to be along for the ride at the moment. Right. And despite the amount of money that you or one could make in capitalizing off this move as a libertarian or anarchist, this really must get you excited because it finally threatens the power structure of the powers that be. This is a decentralized form of money. And if this remains decentralized and remains uh, at this adoption rate, you could actually take power away from the, the people you don't like. Yeah, absolutely. All the gold bugs out there will know that that's really what we want. We want to get rid of central banks. Getting rid of central banks will get rid of big government. And, uh, uh, you know, your average gold bug is definitely a libertarian as well. So we're on the same page there. I'm a gold bug myself, and I'm actually uh, looking forward to getting invested more into gold stocks now that I've got some massive crypto profits. Uh, But you're right. This is way more important than the money. I've said this a few times. I don't even care about the money, really. Like, it's fine. It's good. uh, But money isn't everything. It's a about changing this uh, power structure, this financial structure, the the money system uh, that is so heinous and has been behind every war for hundreds of years. Uh, it's been behind impoverishing billions of people. If we can switch that flip or <laughs> flip that switch, I got dysle- dyslexic there for a second. If we can uh, switch that Flip that switch, man. That's a weird one to say. If we can do that anyway, if we can turn that around, let's change it that way, uh, then uh, we'll have a brand new world of peace and prosperity like we've never known it. So it really isn't necessarily about the profits. It's really about changing the game. Yeah, you were starting to mention gold there. And um, as a commodity investor myself in, in the resource stocks, it's been difficult the last few years because you had the real estate uh, market moving up. You had the Dow moving up, markets around the world. The U.S. dollar was so strong. And what that meant is there was very little speculative money to drive anything into these gold stocks. And now it's almost worse because uh, you have this group of people with similar sentiment to uh, the type of person who would invest in gold and yet they're so interested in the crypto space so it's almost like a nail in a coffin at this point but what do you think of the gold space yeah, I think you're right, and I actually was surprised. I was someone told me this about two years ago. They said, I, "I'll bet that uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies really take away from the gold market." And I said, "Nah, look at the size of Bitcoin at the time. It was like twenty billion dollars." And I was like, "The the gold market's like a seven trillion dollar market." I'm like, "It, it really can't won't affect it at least for years and years and years." But it really, I think, has. I think it's taken some of the speculative uh, money away from things like gold and silver and and taken into the cryptocurrency space. Uh, just like everything, crowds uh, seem to want to go where everything's going up. And, uh, you know, they do the exact opposite of when they go shopping. When people go shopping, they're like, where's the sales at? Uh, when they go investing, they're like, oh, what's what's up a lot? Let's go buy that. And that's that seems to be the case. But, uh, you know, at the Dollar Vigilante, as you know, Colin, both Ed and I are huge gold bucks. We actually ha- recommend having way more of your portfolio in gold and silver than in cryptocurrencies, uh, just for because cryptocurrencies are still very young and speculative and very volatile and risky. Uh, but we've, of course, done very well on those. But, uh, you know, I, I see gold as being an incredibly good hedge at this moment in time for the cryptocurrency gains. Uh, I've, I've not yet fully started to take 
uh, profits, but I'm getting pretty close to hitting the button on at least taking some profits and moving it over to gold. And not just gold, but also gold stocks, which, as you know, have been kind of languishing a little bit for the last year or so. And, uh, you know, the really, it's the end game here is we're, we're in central banks, uh, you know, the U.S. government's bankrupt. All governments are bankrupt. All, all central banks are at 0% or negative interest rates, which is insanity, until the system collapses. That's basically where we're at. We know that's where we're at. It doesn't have much longer. The debt's piling up right now. You have the U.S. government over $20 trillion worth of debt. So the Federal Reserve just keeps printing and printing and printing. And so does the European Central Bank. So does the Japanese Central Bank. They're all just printing money. So all the things that normally benefit from massive inflation and turning into hyperinflation at some point in the next few years, in my opinion, are things like gold, silver, and now cryptocurrencies, of course. But gold and silver used to be the, the main benefactors of those sort of things. So I actually look at the market right now, and I'm like, I see where everything's going. It's not going to be long until this whole system just crashes. And we might even be like next year. It could be that soon, but at least in the next few years, not much more than five years, I don't think. Uh, and I've got these massive cryptocurrency profits now, and gold and silver haven't done much, and the gold stocks haven't done a ton uh, lately. It would be a nice time. I was just thinking about this the other day, to take some of the profits and start investing into some private placements of some junior gold mining stocks, and maybe, who knows, do the whole – 100,000% gain all over again in the gold stocks after this. We're having a good time over here, as you can tell. Yeah, you're having a great time. And um, <laughs> I don't want to Im impose uh, my ideas, but to, to share something, you know, with the crypto space, and maybe you felt the same way as an anarchist or libertarian, the excitement around that gets me more excited than gold. But knowing that gold is there and that the mining space is real and has to be there and how cheap it is, there's almost more certainty at this point to say this has to go up at some point. It's so contrarian. So, you know, that must be playing into your sentiments at this point as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it's been kind of forgotten in the last few years. We actually, Ed Bugos, who's you know one of the top um, gold mining analysts in the world, uh, top economists in the world, in my opinion, uh, he uh, really recommended a lot of gold stocks in uh, 2016, and we did really well. He, he had a total portfolio gain of 99% that year. Uh, this year, it's been a little off, and the cryptocurrencies have taken just fully off. It's just been in the last year. Actually, it's been one it's the the total cryptocurrency space is up about over 1,000% this year, since the start of this year. So uh, we've had massive gains on there. And so, like I said, you know, we're going to see some volatility. We're going to see some pullbacks. Uh, we're going to see, who knows, maybe Bitcoin goes to 20,000 and then really has like a one or two year bear market. That's totally possible and, and goes down to like 6,000 or 4,000 or wherever it goes. Uh, if I was able to take profits over the next few months and years and start putting them, some of them into some gold mining stocks at private placements, as you know, Colin, I know that's a big thing that you like to do. Uh, that's where you can just make the massive, massive gains. So, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because a lot of people say to me about, Oh, you know, you're always so doom and gloom about the dollar collapse and how it's, everything's going to collapse. And it's like, no, I'm not. I'm having a fantastic time. I'm making tons of money. A lot of us are making a lot of money. We're enjoying watching the system burn and we're going to take advantage of it as well. And so that's why the tagline of the dollar vigilante is surviving and prospering during and after the dollar collapse. We don't just want to survive through, which a lot of people used to think you got to be preppers. You know, you should probably prep too. Uh, there's going to be some days without food in, in grocery stores at some point here. Uh, but really, like, let's have fun with this and, and enjoy watching the system burn to the ground. That's the spirit. I like it. Well, you you, you mentioned uh, Ed Bugos. I've known him for some time, and he really is a top-notch analyst and uh, just all-around fantastic guy. Uh, I have been talking to him for some time about a company called Mexican Gold, and I thought that not only uh, this is our largest position uh, in Palisade Global, the company that I help run, uh, but it also has a name that would resonate with yourself living in Mexico and your audience. And um, the company had just put out a million ounce resource in Mexico, open pitable, and Ed, Ed had been watching it for some time and finally um, a couple weeks ago came out and recommended it to uh, your audience. And uh, that was when the stock was at about 30 cents. It's at 40 already. So there are gains to be made in this sector, even though um, the times are uh, not ideal for the mining sector. But um, Ed got right in front of there and uh, happened to have a great hole come out. And we think it's just the beginning. And um, i just been a great, great help having Ed uh, in the story there and telling that story to your audience. 
Yeah, Ed is uh, as I as you said, he really is. I consider him to be the top gold uh, mining analyst in the world. And there might be a couple of better ones, but I don't know who they are. Uh, he is he's like uh, sort of like a super genius. Like he literally pours over mining results just every single day. Sort of not. I don't want to say like Rain Man, but he's like he does like numbers and and equating things. And and uh, when he comes up with a pick, and it, it takes him a while. Like he doesn't re- regularly pick stocks. Um, I think last year, I think he had a couple. Um, this is the first one I think he had that I've seen this year, uh, Mexico gold. So, um, you know, he doesn't do these lightly, but when he does, uh, he's usually pretty excited about it. And he told me uh, right as he was about to recommend it, he said, you should pick some of this up. And, you know, stupidly, I didn't because I was so wrapped up in the cryptocurrency space. I I, I didn't even see his message until it was after it was out. And then the stock rose and it was up like 40 percent or something. And I was like, oh, man, I got to pay more attention. I got, Yeah, I got to pay. I was so wrapped up in the cryptocurrency space right now. But I should have known because Ed's really got a nose for these things. So I'll definitely be following the story. I'm, I'm really uh, I was happy to see. It's a Mexican uh, related uh, uh, gold mining play because I, I really I just love Mexico. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. I think the regulation is a lot better down here than in places like the U.S. or Canada. Uh, the, obviously, the taxation is often quite a bit better. I'm not sure about corporate tax, but uh, it, I just uh, want to support whatever is going on here. So I was happy to see it was right here in, in my neck of the woods and that uh, they've already had some good results. So I'm excited to see because I know Ed's got some uh, big uh, projections for where this could all go and this is just the beginning so i'll definitely be uh, watching and hopefully participating as well i might have to uh, try to buy some if there's a little pullback here yeah and just for listeners who don't know because i know i know this will end up in the comment section mexican gold is m e x on the toronto venture exchange and uh jeff i was laughing the other day i was talking to ed i think yesterday or the day before and he was kind of uh breathing heavily while we were talking and said he was uh, exercising at the same time as watching bitcoin prices and then talking to me about <laughs> mexican gold but i understand he is gonna is likely going to be raising the uh the target price already so super excited about that yeah, that's great. Yeah, Ed's been uh, doing some uh, working out lately. We're all kind of doing this. Uh, we're kind of all like enjoying ourselves right now and getting back in shape. Like, you know, for many years, us anarchist libertarians and gold bugs, we were just kind of like beaten down. And and now it seems like everything's going in the right direction for us right now. So Ed's working out. I'm working out as well. I'm like all, I'm off everything. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Uh, I don't do anything but exercise and, and eat her- herbs and stuff like that now. So uh, yeah, it's good times and uh, definitely be following uh, Mexican gold and um, and all of Ed's picks. He's got a few others as well. So if people out there don't know, uh, if you subscribe to the Dollar Vigilante premium newsletter, and you can just go to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe, uh, that you can get access to all of Ed's work. And he he really puts out, it's, it's not Mickey Mouse at all when he puts out gold stock uh, picks. Uh, it, it's basically looks like a brokerage uh, analyst report. And uh, you you can know just from Ed's track record and experience that it's probably going to be pretty good. Of course, there's risk in everything. But if he likes something, it usually works out. Yeah, I was just sitting here thinking about that quote from Boiler Room uh, when he's talking to the new junior level associates and says, has anybody ever told you that uh, getting rich doesn't doesn't buy you happiness? BS. And uh, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to see you guys having so much fun over there because when uh, you're right and you work hard and you profit off of it, nothing nothing feels better than the, the freedom that you get associated to that. So once again, hats off to the group over there, Jeff, and uh, looking forward to seeing you down at the conference in Acapulco uh, early next year. Yeah, I hope you come back, Colin. I think we were just talking about that. Uh, I think we're going to be able to fit you in again, and I, I hope so because you were excellent last year at the Dollar Vigilante Internationalization and Investment Summit coming up on February 18th, I believe. So in Arcapoco is February Oh, no, February 19th. So uh, Narcopoco is February 15th to 18th, four full days. The last day is actually called CryptoPoco, which is all cryptocurrencies, if you're interested in that. And then we have the full Dollar Vigilante Summit, which you'll be at, Colin, and uh, people like David Morgan and Big Swear and, of course, Ed Bugos and, and many others. Uh, and you, you just look at our last two years, Colin, of what we were recommending. Uh, two years ago was a, a lot of gold stocks, and they went up hundreds of percent. And then last year was a lot of cryptocurrencies. They're up 1,000 percent. So uh, you might want to check out the, uh, the upcoming event in 2018. We've got a pretty good track record so far. Excellent. Jeff, thanks so much for coming on and giving us the time today. And uh, we'll get you back here as we always do in an- another few months. My pleasure, Colin. Take care. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bid. 
how violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?